Wednesday nil, Huddersfield nil. So, Neil Thompson picked his team for, well, I was going to say the first, but possibly the first and last time as we've got a two-week international break coming up now. And Thompson showed his experience from the off. We can talk about XG and everything else, but up here, experience. He's named his team and instantly we've got a couple of quick, easy wins in there. The first thing he's done is simplified things. Footballers, I'll keep going on about this, are human beings. They like simple messages. Anybody, any workplace, give me a simple instruction. Don't overcomplicate things. What do I need to do? That, right. That's what he's done. The second thing he's done is put some young kids on bench. Albeit he didn't use them. It doesn't really matter that he didn't use them now. But by naming the players he did in the starting lineup, by naming people in the positions that he named them in, and by putting some kids out of the academy on the bench, he's changed the atmosphere in the ground before a ball has been kicked. Team sheet goes in, gets released, everybody's seen it, it's on the phones. Suddenly everyone's like, oh yeah. Instantly lifts everybody, and we've not even kicked off yet. Changes all the way through this Wednesday team. Cameron Dawson recalled in goal at the expense of Davis Vasquez. And Michael Hequi returns in after being frozen out, being made something of a whipping boy, I thought, after some early defeats. He was back in the heart of the three in the defence, flanked by Dominic Iofa and Deshaun Bernard, who was the only one of the summer acquisitions who retained his spot. Midfield again, back to the old guard, Byers and Volks, supported in there by Callum Patterson. And in the wide areas, recalls to for Liam Palmer and Rhys James. Lovely to see that bringing us that natural balance back. And up front, what everybody's been calling for, a twin strike force. Lee Gregory and Michael Smith. In terms of the young kids, Pugve and Kanemartri, as I said, it almost doesn't matter that they don't get on. The fact that they're in there lifts fans because supporters, for whatever reason, maybe it's a, a proudness of our club and all supporters want to be proud of the club. When these kids involved in your match day squad that has come through your system, there's a sort of sense of belonging, also, almost a sense of proudness. Do you know what I mean? Almost like you're repaired and lucky and oh great, kids are doing well. Easy wins there. And that's really common sense management and experience from Thompson there. Dad and Moore, of course, back at Hillsborough for the first time since he left in what still seem quite mysterious circumstances. I want four times my wages. The greedy bastard. What's he on a week? Nine and a half pence. Oh. Just before kick-off, as Dad and Moore came down the tunnel, there was a warm reception from all four sides of the ground and uh, being a sort of modest bloke, he's actually looked a bit, a bit embarrassed about it. But he lined his team up now, obviously manager of Huddersfield Town, Neil Thompson in charge of Wednesday, and off they went. Strong start from Wednesday as well, got at it straight from the off. We're about three minutes in, diagonal ball from Volks, I mean we weren't messing about in midfield, diagonal ball from Volks into Smith, lovely little nod down, and George Byers back in the team again. Getting on from midfield, that's what we've been talking about this whole season, is that we've had that bank of five across middle and we've been getting it forward and there haven't been that support. Byers getting on and supporting forward players. Little nod down from Smith. Byers gets a, a, a good shot away. It's there, lad, and deflects over. But it's a positive start. It's getting men forward, supporting attack. And it wasn't always the prettiest, but it doesn't have to be pretty. Positive start from Wednesday and for the first... Five or ten minutes, I thought we were on a tendency. I mean, that there was just more fight. There was more urgency. And I know we'll talk, and there will be criticism in the game. There were, there were times when we could have used the ball better. But what we weren't doing with it, we weren't fucking about the back. And I know there's a lot of purists these days who will... Oh, well, we should have done, we could have passed it here, we could have laid traps for them and pulled them in here and done this. But at the bottom of the table, and we're seven points adrift. 
don't take chances and that's what Neil Thompson did today he set us out not to take unnecessary chances we didn't we got it back to forward quick the quality weren't always there but it was always going to be like that a case of that anyway whichever way things unfolded this season and if the quality is not always there why would you then take the chances that Cisco was making us take if you don't believe you have got the quality there if you, if you haven't got the quality play to the strengths do what you can do get it away from your own box Dawson had been recalled in goal um, that was one of the decisions where I thought it was a bit of a toss of a coin to be honest because I, th I think Vasquez to be fair to him has made some good saves this season um, but again I think it's about that continuity I think it was a team that he's picked today Thompson to give us a bit more belief not just from the fans but the players in each other they, those players played 30 or 40 odd games whatever it was last season they understand each other and I think it was to do with that it came for a punch on about 15 doors and I don't think it should have come from um, but I would genuinely put that down to trying to be positive you know he's been out of the side he's got an opportunity today and I think he comes from that one trying to be positive uh, he ends up. He goes over their kids back, and uh, their forward lobs just wide. That was the first sort of proper chance that Huddersfield had. Um, but other than that, I thought we were quite solid. Patterson's it was. This is what I'm talking about. He's had a bashing, probably about twenty minutes in. A ball coming in into a box. He gets fouled. Takes a right bash on back ahead. About ten minutes before break again. Eddie in there takes another bash, claret everywhere, gets head bandaged up, he's straight back on. You've got to have players who'll do that. I thought he had a really good game passing today. I've seen a bit of criticism. I don't know why I bother, I always see criticism of him, you know. No, he's not Glenn Oddle. He's not spraying ball around like Glenn Oddle. He's not flicking up and volleying in from 45 yards like Matt Lattice here. He's not that type of footballer, is he? But in a relegation dogfight, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I pick him every week. Yeah. We were getting men forward. As well. that's, that's what I, I enjoyed about that first half. We, I, th I thought we had the first 15, and I thought we had probably the 5-10 coming into the break. We were getting men forward. We were, we were getting after the ball. Bernard made a couple of brilliant bursts up the sort of inside left position because he was playing left-sided centre half. Reese James had given us that balance but a couple of times he put really good crosses into the box um, and it, it was it was different from Wednesday the, like I said the, the final ball wasn't always there the final bit of quality wasn't there but as an overall performance as an overall half of football that first half I was really really pleased we were getting stuck in we were in headers we were winning tackles we are in a relegation dogfight and the players that that Thompson had brought in down the spine, a Hekwe, Volks, Patterson, right down the spine of the team. You've got to have players in there that are going to do those jobs, getting a foot in, sticking an head in where it hurts. I haven't looked at the stats, uh, I've been watching Strictly tonight, but I'd love to know how many headers Michael Hekwe won today. Absolutely brilliant. Now, he was sort of he fell out of favour with his skull because he's not he's not one of these centre halves who was under the illusion that he's an amazing footballer like a lot are these days. He's a centre half and he knows he's a centre half. So he does what centre halves do. He heads, he kicks, he tackles, he blocks. Why is he not being in team? He's had a fantastic game today, and after all that time he's had out as well. I think he's really stepped to plate. I thought he was fantastic. Yeah. In fact, all the three lads at the back, but the heck we, I thought, was absolutely brilliant. Second half. The, the one thing where I would have probably picked a different side to, to Thompson was I would have probably put a different forward up. I'd have picked Smith or Gregory, but I would have always put somebody else with him, so... Whatever the combination, Smith and Masabro, or Gregory and Masabro, or Wilkes or whatever. I'd, I'd always want to, I'd always like to have someone up for the well when I was going to travel with the ball and drive at people. Um, Smith were putting him centre back, and again he, he won two clearances at end at first half. We said that's where he comes in handy defending your own box. 
But the number of free kicks that won against him today were... Not only were they not free kicks, but they were actually... They should have been giving free kicks to him. That helic was all over him like a cheap soup this afternoon. And he got absolutely nothing out of match referee. He really didn't. He really didn't. The referee... I'm not blaming referee for us not winning today uh, because he, you know he's not he's not going to have a penalty call or anything like that. But it's the inconsistencies, you know. It, I mean, it was bad in League One. I thought it might be marginally better up here. I mean, there's a bit in the second half. Malik Wilkes has come on uh, up front, and he did what I was just talking about. He gets a ball and he tries to drive it. Plays now. I don't know he's beaten, but it pushes them back, puts them under pressure that way. Um, there's one bit, he, he gets balled out left hand side, beats the first challenge, shoulders the second kid, gets round him, puts a cross in, goes out for the corner, free kick. And because their lad Pearson's literally just fell over. Now, as far as I know in football, having better upper body strength than the opposite marker is is not a crime. But according to this referee work, because literally that Pearson just fell over. Uh, very frustrating. I would say Huddersfield have a spell 20 minutes in second half when they're on top. They've got some good players. Um, Radoni, who impressed me the other year when he, he played for Wimbledon. Um, and as I said, they've got the kid out on the, the right wing. We know Shinny's on. Uh, decent player. But Wednesday are battling. They're tackling, they're winning headers, they're getting stuck in. The number of blocks that they made today, uh, they were really brave and they gave absolutely everything. And honestly, we all want to be entertained, we all want to see nice football, I'm no different to anybody else. But I also want to see the players look like they're desperate to get a result. And today they did, they looked desperate to get a result. They, I mean, we've got a clean sheet today that is fully deserved because of the way that they put themselves about. They started fading, lads, I would say. From about 60 minutes, you could see tired legs. Um, Liam Palmer were looking tired, although he looked like he got a dead leg uh, as well to me at end at first half. I thought George Byers was starting to wilt. But, you know, these are players. James, Palmer, Byers. They've hardly had any game time at all. So they were always going to be tired, especially with their levels at the gate today. They really, really worked their socks off. Um, he mixed it up a little bit. Um, brought Buckley on. <sighs> I'm coming back to referee again. I don't want to talk about referees. Buckley gets ball. He drives up sort of inside left channel. He gets fouled twice. He gets clipped twice by two players. He keeps going. He turns his man, sort of coming in towards the corner at box, gets clipped again, gets clipped again. Then he, he, he comes inside and kid's all over him. He's all over him. And he, he has to just stop his run and just turn around to the referee and say, are you actually watching this game or what, pal? And ref thought, like, oh, right. It's really, really poor. I know no one stops start all the time and... Yeah, advantage. There's no advantage when you fouled six times in 30 seconds. There's no advantage at all. If, if, if anything, they've got about an extra seven men behind ball in, in time that you've been getting kicked and pulled all of it show. It's really poor referee. They have a couple of half chances that Helic drills one wide. Um, Hekwe gives him a bit of a, a bash as he's lining up to shoot and good because that helic he would all of a smith all afternoon get away with murder so when he popped up in our box and heck we gave him a bit back I'm like yeah good equal it out a bit um, nil nil and overall a fair result now we didn't play world's most sparkling football but we've kept a clean sheet, and I want to fancy just to keep a clean sheet, even this time last week. Did we put it into a stand? Yeah, we did put it into a stand when we needed to. I offer a heck, we have seen them both launch them into the back at the north today. Good. 
Don't take chances. Dawson, a lot of kicks today, gone long. There's nothing wrong with playing off the second ball. There's, there's a lot of snobbery today in football. But you've got to do this. Why have you? Because that's how you play nice football and that's how all other teams play. We're bottom at table. Play how you play to your strengths, to the, to the strengths of your squad. And go from there. Maybe it could have been better. Maybe some decision making could have been better. Maybe some quality could have been better. But we've got the squad that we've got. And at the beginning of the season, we were all talking and saying, look, if this squad stays up, that's a result. So, with that in mind, why would you then, oh, we're not, we're not zipping it about? Are you genuinely expecting us to? And if you are expecting us to, are you expecting us to do that and win as well? I don't, you know, what I will say is this. I had more confidence before the game today and I've got more confidence after the game today than I've had for the rest of the season combined. And Neil Thompson's had one training session. One training session. So he's not going to overcomplicate it. He's going to keep it simple. He's going to give people simple instruction and put round pegs in round holes. And we'll look better for it. Defensively, certainly. So a couple of interesting results in regards to us at bottom at table. Fantastic result for Rotherham today. Down at Southampton, a one all draw. Hoogle with the equaliser there after falling behind in second minute. Queen's Park Rangers, the other team down there, seemingly adrift at the bottom. A 4 0 home battering against Blackburn Rovers. Zigardson with a double. And a game I wasn't expecting to mention Leicester 2 Stoke 0. Jamie Vardy on the score sheet again. But the reason I mentioned the Stoke result is they've got dragged into it too. Let's have a look at that 2 0 defeat to Leicester has dragged Stoke right down into it into 21st place. As I said, a fantastic point for Rotherham away at Southampton. Put some on double Wednesday's total. Another defeat for Queen's Park Rangers. But the worrying thing here is that Wednesday already seven points adrift. So we've now got international break. Fortnite to get one or two back. Windass, Bannon. That seven points adrift is worrying. But today's performance I can take from some heart from that there is enough steel in that team, there is enough fight in that team. If we can just get a combination right up front, with that little bit of pace and a little bit of quality, I still think we can survive this season, I really do. Who the manager's going to be to get us to survive, I don't know. There's been talk today, obviously Mr Chan said at the game with his family and in town to recruit a new manager. Apparently there's a couple that are at the top of that list remains to be seen who will get it's the terms and conditions it'll be a stumbling block I'll guarantee it um, there's talk about the young German national team assistant manager um, his coaching record absolutely looks really really good fantastic but there's a difference between being the top man and being assistant to the top man different sorts of stresses and strains, especially if you come into a club that's seven points adrift and it's as absolutely lunatic as Sheffield Wednesday is, you know, so that'd be a, an interesting first appointment for him if it is in. In the meantime, Neil Thompson could take training, get the lads back to basics, get them relaxed, which I thought they looked today, I thought they worked really hard, a basic shape, and everybody knew what they were doing. It's got a fortnight to, to work with them. Uh, and so we don't have to rush this now. We've got this international break. Don't want us to make a knee-jerk reaction and sign in and, and, and get a, a manager in and then get built in six months. Let's make sure we get right man for a job this time. Um, like I said, impressive CV, this bloke. And if it is him, let's hope that we can live up to his expectation and he can live up to ours.